Javier Cano is the Area General Manager for nine LA Market Marriott Full Service Hotels, including the Ritz-Carlton Los Angeles and the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live, where he hosts Hospitality Uncorked, our fabulous annual fundraising gala. Mr. Cano has been instrumental in advocating the ongoing renaissance of downtown Los Angeles, including opening the first five-star hotel, you know, pure luxury, which completed the LA Live project, a $2.5 billion sports residential and entertainment district that began with the opening of Staples Center in 1999. As the present chairman of the Los Angeles Tourism Marketing District, Mr. Cano oversees a $27 million fund to drive business to area hotels, spearheading programs such as the award-winning Everyone is Welcome, campaign showcasing LA's diversity and inclusion. Mr. Cano is a member of many boards and committees where he supports the economic development of local communities. Closer to our hearts is his amazing support of the Collins College. He is a longtime active board of advisor and has hired many of our students and graduates. Known to many as Mr. LA, he is very connected to all the major events in downtown LA. Please help me welcome Mr. L.A. Well, good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, President Coley, Provost Brown, and uh, Jones. Uh, to class of 2023, congratulations. You guys made it. You worked hard through lectures and projects, um, through homework and studying, and maybe even a little cramming along the way. Uh, congratulations for showing the hard work and dedication that's going to be so important to you as you continue on the next part of your journey. I was honored and flattered to have been received the invitation to be the commencement speaker for this year by Dr. Margie Jones. While, uh, while I was very excited to be asked, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, panic set in, and uh, it was a big responsibility to be thinking about what was I going to talk about. So ultimately, I decided to share a little bit about what I've learned along the way, in hopes that uh, some of my story will help you as you continue on in your journey. Uh, first of all, a little bit about my career. Um, I've been with Marriott for 44 years. And uh, I like to tell people that I started working uh, in our industry and I changed careers three or four times. I have been fortunate to stay in the same industry and even more fortunate to stay in the same company. Uh, when I began with Marriott, we numbered our hotels. And I started in the 63rd hotel that Marriott has. Uh, we now have over 8,000 hotels and over 31 brands. And um, I've been very fortunate to work in about a dozen of those hotels along the way, both in this country and having worked in Mexico as well. I was born in East L.A., and if you count the fact that I was born here, this is my fourth time through Los Angeles. And uh, today I oversee the day-to-day -day running of the Ritz-Carlton Los Angeles, the JW Merritt, uh, the residences, we have 224 condominiums. I also run a homeowner association, uh, and, um, which is a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, and I'm also responsible for the LA market for Marriott's full service hotels. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have been a general manager at four different hotels. And of those four, three of those, I've been fortunate enough to be selected as general manager of the year. Uh, the fourth one uh, didn't have individual honors. Uh, as part of that brand, but we got Hotel of the Year in that one. Uh, I wanted to share with you a handful of my thoughts uh, and uh, hope that uh, some of these are going to help you as you continue on your journey. First thing I want to talk about is inspiration. Uh, I'm here because I have remarkable parents. And uh, my father was orphaned when um, he was about nine years old, uh, six kids, and uh, moved from relative to relative. And uh, at a young age, he decided that there was not much of a future for him where he was at, so he came to this country from Mexico. And he started working in the fields as a laborer, that worked the factories, and eventually 
ended up uh, where we moved from East LA to Omaha, Nebraska, where he worked there in the meat packing plants. And um, I started uh, kindergarten. Uh, I did not know any English. And uh, so I learned my, uh, my English at, in school, having done nothing but spoken Spanish in the house for many, many years. And uh, I will tell you that no matter uh, how hard I felt I had it, no matter how difficult I felt the situation was, I always thought back at the life that my father has had and how much he has overcome. And um, I will tell you, to this day, he uh, is still my role model and my hero. Uh, he's 91 years old and uh, continues to just uh, do great things. You know, you're going to face obstacles along the way. You're going to face adversity. You're going to face setbacks. Uh, you need to find your inspiration to get past these things. You need to discover what drives you. you got to go forward with that inspiration. So whenever you need to, you need to refer back to that. Remember your inspiration. Uh, next, I want to talk about wanting, needing to hear the truth. Uh, as an entry-level uh, front desk manager, uh, I was responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations there. And I worked in a convention hotel. And at this convention hotel, we had sales managers that would come down with last minute group information, and it would put a burden on our team. So I felt it necessary to defend our team against these people that came down with all this last minute information. So I would give them a little bit of a hard time, sending them back to go get more information, making it a little bit easier on our team. You know, I was standing up for our, our team. Um, well, my boss one day came to me and he said, uh, he asked me if I wanted to, to hear the truth. And I, a little curious, I said, sure, I'd like to hear the truth. He says, nobody wants to work with you. And I'm like, oh, I, what do you mean nobody wants to work with me? He says, you make everybody's life difficult. I said, I'm not making life difficult. I'm standing up for our team. And um, he, he sat me down and he said, look, those sales managers aren't doing this to make your life difficult. They're getting last-minute information from customers. They're doing what they can. So I sat there and I said, okay, I had a choice to make. So my decision was I heard the truth and had to do something about it. I had to go back to all these sales managers and tell them I was wrong. I had to tell them that I had made a mistake in what I was doing. So I needed to fix this position that I would put myself. I had to show them that I was willing to work with them. It's not easy when you do that, when you've been spending all this time making life difficult on people. But there's going to be times ahead of you when you think you're going in the right direction. There's going to be times ahead of you when you think you're taking the right course of action. But when you are just seeing a situation where you know it's right. But it's very important to surround yourself with people who will listen, who will make you hear the truth. So you're going to get to a point in time, and you want to make sure that when you get to that point in time, you hear the truth. Next, in my career, I was presented an opportunity to uh, be promoted to the laundry department. Now, I had been working as a front desk agent. I thought my career was going to continue to go to the front office in the front desk area. But my boss came to me and said, we got this opportunity. Uh, now, I was in my mid-twenties, and all I knew about laundry is you put everything in cold and you didn't screw it up. And uh, so my boss says, you ought to think about this. So I thought about it and I said, okay, I'll, I'll take the job, I'll try it out. So I, I showed up and, uh, in this area, and I, of course I knew nothing about the area, uh, and I said to uh, the team there, I said, okay, um, I, I needed to come in and I needed to learn. Uh, because Look, we've all had a situation when someone who didn't know anything about an area came in and they just started taking over and barking orders. But uh, the idea was I needed to learn about this area that I didn't know anything about. And I did. I spent time learning from the team there. We got together. And um, I think one of the important lessons I learned was given to me by my grandmother. And she would often tell me that you're given two ears and one mouth. Um, para que puedas escuchar, escuchar el doble uh, de lo que hablas, so you can listen uh, to twice what you speak. And this was a message that had stayed with me for such a long time. So I listened to the team there. We got very good at what we did, 
uh, and they taught me a lot. And ultimately what ended up happening is I ended up getting promoted in about six months. But the important thing is that you're going to get an opportunity, you will come to a point in time, and you've got to make a choice. And when you do, choose to listen. Uh, there are times where you're going to need to take control. You're going to need to resolve to take control. Uh, I worked in a hotel in San Antonio, Texas, and it was during the time, it was winter time, and uh, there was not much business in the hotel, and so they had shut off all the heat uh, in the ballroom area of the hotel. And there was a skeleton crew, and because I was the junior guy in my department, I got nominated to work that shift. So we were there, and all of a sudden we got a call that there had something had happened on the ballroom level. Went to the ballroom level and found a water main had broke. So there was water just gushing down in this ballroom area. So took a look around. There was only three or four of us in management that were working that day in the hotel. I thought, okay, we got to do something here. So uh, one of the challenges that we faced was that this wasn't too far from where the elevators were. And I knew if all this water came running and hit the elevators, it would take them out. And we had a 20-some-odd story building. And there was no way that we were going to be successful in this hotel if you didn't have elevators. So I, uh, I called up to my team and I said, listen, get the linen down here. So they started bringing all this linen down from the floor above where the laundry was, and we started building a wall around the elevators and just kept bringing more and more linen down. Well, this kept kind of going on for a little while. We, uh, we ended up... Um, bringing down some of the extraction equipment, which is the equipment that you use to, to um, take up uh, water from the... Well, we put those to push the water out the windows that were there in one of the local meeting rooms. So we've got all this water flowing in, and, and some of our staff, some of our managers had started showing up. Well, unbeknownst to me, our general manager had also showed up, but I was just busy barking orders to people. Get that linen, move it over there, go put that over on this side. Finally, what seemed like forever later, they got the water shut off. And uh, my boss pulled me aside, and he started chuckling. He goes, you realize that you were telling everybody what to do. And uh, he, goes, the, uh, he goes, the general manager included. And, and uh, I sat there, and I said, OK, am I still employed? And uh, the good news was that at the end of the day, we saved the elevators. Uh, but the important thing is that you're going to find yourself in a position where you're going to need to step up. You're going to find yourself in a position where someone's going to have to take charge. What you need to be able to do in that time is reutilize all that you've been trained and taught and take control. You've got to find your own flood. Uh, next, I had an opportunity to uh, work in, uh, in Mexico. We, um, we were going through and uh, opening a hotel in Puerto Vallarta. And I think the important lesson in this one is that you've got to keep swimming. Uh, opening this hotel, opening any hotel is a challenge and an opportunity. But if you're doing this in a foreign country, it's a little bit more of a challenge. You open something here, you've got tried and true vendors, you put an order in, and things show up at your loading dock, and you get yourself ready to go. Well, I found out by going into a foreign country that mm, people don't deliver from another country. So there was no Amazon, there was no Google, so it had to come up and become very, very resourceful. Now, you're going to get yourself in positions where things seem, obstacles seem very, very great. Obstacles seem overwhelming to you. And you're going to find yourself in a position where you have to make decisions. Well, we went through... We made all the orderings that we had to. Uh, now, I will tell you to this day, not everyone doesn't know how much stuff was actually missing because we did have a lot there, but we did have a few things that were missing. But we were able to get the hotel open. But you're going to come across these obstacles and you'll face them. My advice to you is always remember to keep swimming. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to think about choices. And our industry is one where traditionally you work a lot of hours. And you, you find that you're going to make some of the best friends and acquaintances over the time that you've worked these hours. Um, but it is true 
that you're going to find yourself in times where you want to step away or slow down and seek a little bit more of what is work-life balance. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I would like you to think about this in another way. Instead of thinking about this as work-life balance, I'd like you to think about it as work-life choices. Because the idea of balance feels that you're out of balance if you're seeking something. But the idea of work-life choices, the concept is that you make the choice. You can choose during a point of your career to work more, to work less. You don't want to get yourself in a situation where you don't feel like you have control. Try to remember that no matter how hard things get, no matter what difficulties you may face, you're the one that has the choices. Choose to do what you want. Likewise, choose, to do what, uh, choose not to do something. That is your choice. I think the, uh, the important thing is that you've ach achieved a great education in the tradition of a polytechnic institution, and you learned by doing. I know that when I hire somebody from Cal Poly, they know how to work. They know what is, how to balance a number of priorities. They learn by doing. That is such an important thing because the rest of your career, you're going to be learning by doing. I am fortunate that in the role that I am in today, I get to hire people for our hotel. And we have a few people here in the audience that are working for our hotel as we speak. And um, I certainly would like uh, you to wave your arms. Come on, wave your hands if you're out there, if you work for us. Come on. So uh, I would like you to please remember, as you continue on your journey, wherever it may take you, find your inspiration, choose to hear the truth, choose to listen. When opportunity presents itself, take control, and finally, control your choices. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me here, and once again, congratulations to the class of 2023.